this is a role of Portrait 800, a praised film in the film community, and I've often been told to shoot it, and after nearly two years of shooting film, I still haven't tried it. But now, you can see, it is right in front of me, and tomorrow, the time has come. I'm going to get up at four o'clock in the morning, and I'm going to drive out to see the sunrise from a hill, and I'm finally going to shoot my first roll of Portra. episode of Photography Behind the Scenes. After parking the car in the middle of a dark forest on this hill, I made my way onto the field, where I was walking up this road which, according to the maps, was going to take me to the east side of the hill, from where I should be able to watch the sunrise. I walked a couple minutes without finding anything to shoot at first, but once I came here, I thought I might have found a way to photograph the colourful clouds. I changed to the 50mm to gain some reach to the forest, which would be my foreground. Here is the result, and it's not as good as I had envisioned, but nevertheless not a bad start I think. I love the colours and the silhouette look of the forest, which is exactly why I was wanting to get the shot. However, the composition isn't quite doing it for me. The idea was pretty simple, bottom third forest, upper two thirds sky. However, it doesn't feel very intentional. I think that comes from the left side maybe, where the forest ends and there's a change of structure. But overall, it's a neat start I think. Oh, and there's a light leak. I don't know how that happened, but it's there. Okay, I think the sun's gonna come up any moment now. Um, in the horizon behind that mountain there. There it is. Okay, time for the next photo. But where now? So, I was finding myself in the unfortunate situation at this moment that the sun had risen, the light was special, but I didn't have a composition to shoot yet and was having difficulties finding one. Nah, it's not worth it. <laughs> I don't want to shoot this one. I then had a similar composition at a different position, and that was kind of working, so I got the shot. Here's the result, and I like it. It's not particularly outstanding, but I think it's a solid shot of the sunrise lighting up the landscape. I like the blurry field in the foreground, adding some depth to the photo, and the landscape itself is pretty cool I find with its details, such as the lake, which might not be noticed immediately. Then I had walked up the hill in hopes of finding something up there, and indeed, I came to this cute path next to the forest. Here I thought it could be cool to get a shot of the path with the trees hanging over in the composition. Okay. 
here is the result, and I think this turned out nicely. The idea worked out, more or less. I've got the path, and I think the angle captures the cute aspect of it, which was what I was going for. In addition to that, of course, the sunrise lighting here just looks wonderful. One thing I'm not sure about, though, is the focal length. Maybe I should have gone for the 50, because for my taste, this composition has too much space, taken especially on the left side by the forest. But maybe simply panning to the right a little more would have done it as well. Okay, so it's actually the first time for me to shoot with this camera. It's another Practica, like you know I already have one, but this is a different version and the cool thing about this one is that it has a self-timer. Uh, this thing here is the self-timer. I'm going to try it out now, I want to take a self-portrait. I want to stand right there somewhere in the morning sun and I think it should look pretty cool. than I expected. I need to get into position faster, so let me check where the position is. So I guess right here is quite nice. Okay. So that's kind of terrifying shooting these self-portraits uh, on film now because I cannot check what it looked like. I hope I was even in frame, but I'm pretty sure I was. Just I'm not sure if I was far away enough. You know what, let's do one more <laughs> just for the sake of exposure because I'm not sure if I completely overexposed the photo. I'm going to try one more at 500th instead of 125. Okay, this is the last try. So here is the first of three attempts. This was the one in which I wasn't in position yet, however I kind of like it actually. I couldn't check the photo of course, so I couldn't have known, but the natural position worked out fine here. However, I'm still glad to have gotten the second version, because I do think that it looks better than the first, and the photograph in general actually just turned out amazing I think. It's exactly what I was going for, a romantic sunrise photo of the subject in the field looking out into the distance towards the sun. The size of the subject in relation to the environment works perfectly and I'm in love with the composition. We've got a solid foreground and bottom third that is simply the field here and then comes the reason why I wanted to come up onto this hill in the first place. Being even just a couple hundred meters above the surrounding level can make the landscape look so vast because there is so much more to see. Behind the field there is a forest, and further in the distance are more fields and hills. This adds to the distant gaze of the subject because we as the viewer can actually see what kind of distance is being looked at. One small annoyance is the light leak, so I don't know what is going on here, whether this new camera of mine is not sealed properly or something else let light onto the film. Luckily here the effect is not so disruptive, in fact it's actually interesting because it adds a dreamy effect to the photo. And here is the last photo, the darker exposure, because I was unsure whether I was too heavily overexposing the first two pictures, but as you can clearly see, the first exposure was just right, and this one is sadly too dark. The exposure also made the light leaks extremely visible here. Anyway, those were the three self-portraits I got on that field, and I think this one here is great. So once I came down here, I indeed found something that might work and I thought could be another interesting photo.
Okay, it's time to try another one. Um, I'm not as happy with the lighting this time, but I just want to try a different composition. I'm just worried that I won't get there in time, but I'll do my best and run as fast as I can. Okay, <laughs> gonna do my best. Okay, if I heard that correctly, I think that should have worked. Um, and I don't think I'll do it a second time. Don't want to use that many shots of this precious roll of Porsche 800. So yeah, where do we go next? I suppose we'll go somewhere down that way. Because um, I'm running out of compositions up here. Um, so I guess we'll head down to the valley. But first, let's review the photo I just got. And it's pretty cool, I think. The elements I was looking at here are the rising slope I'm standing on and the background that is split into sky and some hills on the left. Again, I love the distance I was able to gain in the short time, which makes the composition pretty effective in my opinion. So overall, the photo definitely works. I think, however, as you can see, the light leaks are getting worse with every photo. It's the same style again, one red stripe and one white one. The red one has a cool effect, I find, but the white one is so intrusive that it's becoming really distracting. So there is one more thing that I want to try. So I was greatly enjoying the self-timer of the camera this morning. Here I was looking for a composition with the intention to try yet another self-portrait. Okay, so the plan is to just do another one of those classic running into the distance photos. This time I'm not trying to like stand in a particular position anywhere so it should be a bit easier i'm just going to run off into the distance and hope that the shot fires at some point and yeah we'll see how far i get all right so i need to run okay oh wait So I didn't hear the shot fire, I mean you did probably, but I didn't, but I guess I can just check by doing this, turned, so uh, should be fine. So here is the result, and these light leaks are getting worse and worse. The red one looks pretty interesting again, but I don't like the white one so much. The composition is fine, nothing great however. I like the moment that the camera happened to capture and how I'm seemingly sinking into the grass. So by now you can see the golden sunrise look had already faded and I was now walking in some more neutral light, even though the sun was still low enough to provide a nice sideway angle. On the way down the hill, I passed a viewpoint where I thought it might look cool to get a shot with the brown grasses in the foreground. Here's the result, and I think it's pretty cool. The composition is simple, but it just works, and I appreciate the golden looking foreground. The light leaks are again exactly the same, so one red stripe and one white stripe on the right side of the photo. And before someone points it out, yes, there is that one little annoying leaf peeking into the photo at the top left corner. It would be easy to fix, but I left it for now to show you the photograph with all its flaws. Okay, I'm going to try to climb up there. 
in the short amount of time that the time of the camera gives me. I don't know if I'll succeed, but let's try it out. Well, the light leaks are getting out of hand here. This one is such a pity because they don't only disrupt the photo in some areas, but pretty much cover it completely only leaving the side, which wasn't exactly the focus of this composition. Then, from here on, I don't know what happened. Something went terribly wrong inside the camera, and the following shots are not only plagued with light leaks, but frames also started overlapping, as if the film got all mixed up inside the camera. So here is one of the next photos. This is just a total mess and a mix. Then, later, I was on my way back to the car and got a shot of this cute house, which, however, came out looking like this. Next, I got a photograph of some flowers, and this one actually turned out pretty cool. As you can see, I cropped it to exclude the overlapping frames, and now I'm left with a square photo of these flowers with a blue light leak, which I think actually suits this photograph wonderfully. So in this case, it worked out as a happy accident. Then I got another photo of a cute house, which also resulted in a wild mess, and from there I made it back to the car and headed home. So that was an interesting end to the session, in hindsight of course. At the time of shooting, I thought I was getting beautiful clear shots. Nevertheless, I think we can call this morning session a success. I managed to go out at this time and experience a gorgeous sunrise, I got some shots that I'm super happy with, some that didn't quite work, and some that just turned out cool with a bit of luck. I don't really mind accidents like these actually, because as we saw they can result in pretty interesting photographs. However, it does sting that this had to happen on my first roll of Portrait 800, which is a film so expensive that I haven't tried it for one and a half years, and I'm not planning on shooting this very regularly now. However, now having shot it, I do have to say that I get it. During the scanning process, I did notice a significant difference in the versatility and dynamic range of Portrait 800, which is something that I would like to have more often. Anyway, that is it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If so, I'd appreciate a like, consider subscribing if you haven't yet, and I'll see you again next week. Until then, goodbye.